some Laura Vitale. On this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I'm going to show you how to make the perfect roasted turkey for Thanksgiving. It's going to be lovely and golden brown. We're going to make an herb butter to stuff underneath the skin just to keep it super moist and delicious. We're going to baste it every 30 minutes just to ensure that it says super moist. And it's super simple and easy to do, so let's get started. Now, of course, before we get started, we need to go over the ingredients, so let's do it. You're going to need your fresh turkey, of course, some onions, celery, carrots, garlic, some fresh herbs such as rosemary, thyme, sage, some unsalted butter at room temperature, some salt, some pepper, olive oil, and some chicken stock. That's it. Now, first thing you want to do is get your oven to 350. Now, second thing, well, actually, the very first thing you want to do is get your turkey ready. So, if you're getting a frozen turkey, you want to make sure it's completely thawed, and then you rinse it, and then you pat it dry really, really well. And I suggest taking it out of the fridge for about an hour before we put it in the oven because it's always best to roast up any kind of meat when it's a little bit more room temperature. That way it cooks evenly. So, you have that ready. I had, that's what I did. I just dried it. It's completely ready. Before I touch it, I'm going to get going to my herb butter. This is the means by which you will always have a super moist turkey without having to brine it. Now, I have brined my turkeys before, which is just a big bucket of water with salt and sugar and a bunch of different flavorings, which is great. But this, well, that takes a couple days because it has to be in the brine for 24 hours, and then you got to let it sit in the fridge for another 24 hours. If you have the time, that's great. If you don't have the time, but you still want to ensure that your turkey is super moist and has a lot of flavor, this is the way to do it. We're going to make a really flavorful butter that we're just going to stuff between the skin and the breast. And that way, when we go to baste it every 30 minutes after two hours, it's going to be absolutely perfect. So what I'm doing here, I have my butter that's at room temperature. Now I'm taking my thyme, stripping it off the leaves a little bit because I don't want the woody stems. So now I'm going to just make a big pile of herbs and I'm going to chop everything and put it right into this bowl. I'm just going to start chopping this really, really fine. And if you want to, you can certainly do this in a food processor, but I just think for such a small amount of work, I don't feel like having to wash up something else. You know how I feel about that. So just using your knife and rocking it back and forth. Never put your fingers down. Always keep your palm of your hand on the tip and your other hand, making sure it's really secure so it's not wobbling. You want to make sure you have control of the knife and not the other way around. And we're just going to bring this back and forth, making sure everything is super, super fine. Now in this bowl, I'm going to take two cloves of garlic and I'm just going to use my little microplane zester because it gets nice and fine almost like a pulp. I'm just going to grate both cloves and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Laura, how is it possible that you are only using two cloves of garlic for that big turkey? And the reason is, is because I don't want this to be too, too pungent. I don't want it to be like, whoa, you spit into a big piece of garlic. And believe it or not, when you paste garlic, it becomes so much stronger than if you were to just cut it. I guarantee it. You just got to trust me on that one. I have made them see that pulp. That pulp is so pungent and so spicy that a little goes a long way. And I want this to be herb and garlic. Now I don't want it to just be garlic. I'm just going to season this with some salt and pepper. Generous sprinkling of salt because we have a lot of turkey to cover. And now just using your spoon, go ahead and just mix the whole thing up. That looks perfect. And you can see how simple it is to do when your butter is at room temperature. It's very easy to kind of mix everything together. So now I'm going to work on the mirepoix, the vegetable that are going to go to the bottom of the roasting dish, which I have introduced you guys to this before around the holidays. Foil trays are my best friends because I don't like to clean up. So now in the bottom of this tray, I'm going to just put some onions and I'm not going to peel them. I'm not going to worry about it because this will all be strained. So but it's going to just add so much flavor that we're going to use for our gravy. So you want to make sure you have that all in there. We have two large onions, again, not peeled, a giant head of garlic that I'm just going to cut in half like that. 
you wouldn't believe the amount of flavor that this gives to your gravy. It's amazing. Add in some carrots. I'm gonna add, they are washed. You wanna make sure that they're at least washed if you're not gonna peel them. Just put them in there. I'll add one more because I love how sweet carrots are. Then you're gonna add in some celery. A ton of celery. I love celery. If you don't like celery, just please put some in here because it does make a really big difference. And just think about it. When the turkey sits on this and all of the drippings come down, it just, listen, you've just got to believe me. It's amazing. Now, quick tip. All the stalks or the, the stems of your herbs that you didn't want to chop up because they're a little bit too tough, put them in here because they still have flavor and that is, is going to get you know, strained so you're not going to bite down on it. Some rosemary, a couple pieces of thyme, a little extra virgin olive oil, just a touch. You really don't need a whole lot. Maybe about a tablespoon. Don't really have any left in there. Season it with salt and pepper, just like so. And then, just gonna mix this up. You wanna make sure you have everything on a single layer. Okay, so now that that's done, we're gonna work on the turkey. Now, you're gonna take your hands, you might need to use a knife for this, but I usually just use my fingers. And you're gonna just loosen up the skin between, of course, the meat and the skin. You don't wanna puncture it, so just be careful. And like I said, if you need a knife for this, go ahead and get a knife to help you out, but this works for me just fine. Okay, that's good enough. Now we're going to take the majority of our butter, and I know, I mean, it's not the most attractive thing you're doing, but it is going to be so super worth it. You'll see. The amount of flavor that this just provides is insane. So the majority of this is gonna go right in here, working it right between the thigh so that the dark meat gets a good amount of flavor as well. And don't worry if you can't get it all right down in there because once the butter melts, it's gonna penetrate all the way in. And now we're gonna take the remaining of the butter and we are just going to spread this all over it. So now that your turkey is covered with the butter mixture, make sure you wash your hands. And now we're gonna stuff the inside with some veggies. Now, you might have noticed that I'm not putting stuffing in my turkey. I did do a recipe on my favorite stuffing, so if you wanna go check that out, please do, it's fantastic. But I never cook my stuffing inside the bird. Um, I find that when you do that, you don't get an even cooking time on your turkey because the inside, you'll still have like bloody juices and I, that's, I just, I don't, I don't play that game. No way. So I suggest always, always doing your stuff, stuffing separately. That's my preference. If you do it, you know, differently, then it's fine, but that's just how I roll. Now I'm gonna take my leftover herbs, gonna pinch them together. Just gonna stuff them in. And there's no real particular way of doing this. Just wanna stuff the inside so it's got great flavor. And now I'm just gonna grab our kitchen twine and tie the legs together. And I don't trust it like, you know, the very French pastry, not pastry chefs, but very uh, French fancy chefs do. I don't think it's necessary. All I do is tie the legs together just to make sure that it cooks evenly. Then I'm gonna pop this Get it out of this tin. Of course, don't bring the, uh, the paper with you, but I always sit it on paper just to um, absorb any extra moisture from when I washed it. And then I'm just going to take the wings and I'm gonna tuck them under. This makes, whoops, this makes the turkey cook super evenly. They don't wanna stay down there for some reason. Just, you can force it, it'll stay. There we go. Sit it nice and straight, just like that. Take some of your chicken stock, pour it around. This is going to create great basting liquid. Oh, so wonderful. So now this is gonna go into your preheated oven, 350, for two hours. And after two hours, I'll show you what it looks like and I'll show you the next step.
After two hours, this is what your turkey should look like. And as you can see, it started to develop a great color. It's definitely not done yet. But now, after it started to develop the color, we want to baste it. And all I'm doing is just taking my turkey baster, baster, and I'm just sucking up all the juices from my little tin here that have so much flavor at this point, and just going all over the place with it. This looks pretty good right now. Now, what we're going to do next is I'm going to cover this with aluminum foil and I'm going to put this back in. This is a really big turkey, it's about 16 pounds. I'm going to put this back in for covered for an hour and a half, making sure to baste it every 30 minutes. So within an hour and a half, we're going to baste this three times. Okay? Back in. My turkey cooked for another hour and a half that was covered with aluminum foil and I basted it every 30 minutes. Now this is pretty much the last step. You want to baste it really well because it's going to go back into the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes uncovered. We just want to get a little bit more color, tiny, tiny bit more because as you can see it's gotten plenty of color. And then I'm going to let it rest for covered with aluminum foil. I'll show you what it looks like when we're finally done. Now I have my turkey resting under my kitchen towel and aluminum foil. Now remember, it went back in without any covering on it for about 20 minutes and I took it out. I covered it well to keep it nice and warm and that also makes sure that the juices get right back into the meat and it doesn't get dry. Now I'm not going to carve mine today because it will take way too long but I do have an episode on it that I did last year on how to you know, carve a turkey so go ahead and go check that out. I'm just going to go ahead and put this on a platter. And now a tip I want to give you, first of all, don't throw this away because this is going to be the base for your gravy. Now a tip I want to give you as far as how to decorate your platter, um, if you know me then you know I'm not into fancy decorating or anything like that, but around this time of year we all have things in our fridge that can be great beautiful decorations to put around your platter. And it's simple things. You know you probably have fresh cranberries, you have some sort of herb in your fridge, you have some kind of fruit, apples, pears, you name it. So what I suggest is you get a bunch of these and I like to group them. So what I'll do is I'll put a big bunch, which I'll show you, I'll put a big bunch of cranberries right in the front because that it's got a lot of color so it'll attract attention. And then just walk, you know, whatever you've got you can kind of make it look absolutely gorgeous without thinking about it and it's just using things you probably already have on your, on, in hand and you don't have to go out to the store to buy something else that you're probably not going to use again. So why do it? That's pretty much it. Now I hope you guys have enjoyed spending time with me and I'll link the other video down below on how to carve a turkey so go ahead and check that out if you're interested and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.